Hello there, thanks for coming by this afternoon, PosterCentral.com's video blog. I'm Pete Howard, it's afternoon where I am. I don't know what time it is where you are, but that's a nice opener, I guess. Anyway, here we have a gorgeous Jumbo Globe poster for the Ike and Tina Turner Review from 1962. Oh my goodness, did they know how to use those yellows and reds when designing Ike and Tina Turner posters at the Globe Poster Company based in Baltimore. Wow, it's big. It's bright, it's gorgeous, and it's jumbo, and it's on cardboard, and in this case it's framed, so we'll get a little bit of a reflection, but just look at those graphics, and just look at that. It's just, wow! I mean, how could you walk down the street and see this in a window and not stop and read it? And of course, that was the whole, uh, the whole intent, so, wow, 1962. And what a great time in Ike and Tina Turner's career. For goodness sake, they were writing the crest of five consecutive top ten rhythm and blues hits, so really special. But the venue was Chill Howie Park in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'll get right to the meat of the matter because it was such a dramatic attention getter, and that is the segregation line on this, which comes right above the orange color there. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you can read that. And it says, of course, um, various seats will be reserved for white spectators. Definitely a very, very chilling line, and down south, I've had a couple of other posters on my blog that have a so-called seg line, and segregation was just rampant in the south at this time, 1962. Evans, in fact, your socially conscious folk singers, such as Bob Dylan, was writing songs like Blowing in the Wind, addressing the very issue, and, um, you know, <coughs> pardon me, this is the very issue <coughs> happening in black and white. Oh boy, you know, and it just sort of like takes your attention away from the music for a moment. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's the way the South was back then, and we just, uh, we just live with it now and hopefully learn from history's lessons for sure. So, as I was saying, I can Tina, it is a great time in their career. They were really riding high with all those hits. And four of those top ten R&B hits are on the poster, interestingly enough, on either side of the word review there. You can see there's uh, three of them, and there's three more over there a little bit unwieldy when they are in the frame like this. But it's interesting because Ike and Tina, the part of their legacy, of course, is the way they fought and everything, and I think this is too early in their career, perhaps, <clears throat> for that to be happening or for drug problems to be present. But it is interesting how the one hit of the last five left off here was I Idolize You, <laughs> and in its place is a song called, right above my fingers there, <clears throat> yep, <laughs> The argument. Hmm, very interesting. I wonder how that, uh, how that plays out. 1962, by the way, was the end of the Sioux Records era for Ike and Tina Turner. <clears throat> Pardon me, they had um, eight different labels over the next ten years, really floating around and so forth, but they had really hit their groove from 1960 through 62 on Sioux Records. And then you have below the review, you have the Ikeettes, their backup group, and the Ikeettes is misspelled there. There's supposed to be one last E before the S, but that's okay. And see the song title there, it says I'm Blue, the Gong Gong Song. Tina Turner is in backgrounds on that record, and it went number three R&B and top 20 pop, so quite a bingo. Nice record in its own right, for sure. I hope Ike wasn't jealous of the uh, background singers having hits, but probably not, because he probably did the writing and producing, who knows. So, boy, here you have it, you know, a poster that works on so many levels, it's one of the most um, <clears throat> compelling and interesting soul music acts in history, in popular music history. <clears throat> Had a great time in their career with an absolute awesome, gorgeous looking concert poster from Globe Posters. Rare, you know, scarce collector's item like most of these things. And then that compelling civil rights element angle. Ooh, boy, about, uh, you know, the segregation seating. So, really, on all level, I mean, this is the kind of poster I would think that uh, Tina herself would want hanging in the house, right? I mean, what a conversation piece for people who love, who love music and who were involved with this at the time, certainly, as well. So, Well, hello there from four years later. <laughs> That's right, amazing, huh? Better video quality, you know, richer colors on the poster, perhaps, better lighting. I've got more wisdom. I've got grayer hair. You know, <laughs> whatever four years brings, that's what I've got. But I just couldn't resist showing this to you. It's the exact same poster that I've been showing you, but from two months later. And the city is Sacramento, California. Now, everything in the day-glow colorful area, of course, is identical to the other poster as befitting a tour-blank definition. 
But up top, well, of course, that's where it changes from show to show. And uh, the other one, interestingly, at the top there said show and dance, and this one says dance and show. Hey, <laughs> depend on me for valuable information. <laughs> but uh, then it says, of course, Coconut Grove, a real sexy sounding nightclub and stuff. There were several around the United States in the 1960s, perhaps inspired by the 1938 hit motion picture and song from that movie. And then Sacramento, California, of course, the state's capital. And the date on there, very clear, Sunday night, December 30th, from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Now, there's only one other thing on this poster I want to show you that's different from the other one, and it's, believe it or not, not in the colored area. Let's take a look. Take a look at that, down on the bottom white margin. Wow, you know, for collectors of Globe posters, this one's a real shocker. I can't recall ever seeing this logo before on a poster, maybe just once. An Earth logo for Globe poster. Boy, you know, they might have used that on their stationery and business cards and stuff, but you just never see this on their posters. Um, if I had to guess, one reason might be they might have found that it just clogged up with ink too easily because it's a detailed little Earth logo and maybe, you know, look great when things went fine, but you get a little ink gumming in there and it might have looked terrible, so they probably just reverted to using the simple three words, Globe Poster Baltimore. But boy, it looks kind of snazzy. I like it, but you just never see it on a Globe Poster. So, Ike and Tina Turner from 1962. Well, now don't forget to check out my other video blog that I recorded back in 2012 of this poster from the summer of 1962. I really like to emphasize this beauty because this was the very first year that Ike and Tina Turner stepped up with this just, you know, gorgeous, extravagant, flame-colored presentation of a concert poster that would serve them very well throughout the entire decade of the 1960s. And so, great to show you a couple from the first year they used it. Thanks a lot for dropping by. Have a good day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.